Hi and welcome in this new video, hope you're doing well, hope your day is great and stay to discover the newest features of Airflow 2.8. My name is Mark Lamati, Head of Customer Education at Astromer, best-selling instructor on Udemy. And if you don't want to miss anything about Airflow, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, that will help me a lot. So without further ado, let's discover the newest features of Airflow 2.8. You might have a task in failure with no logs and this is annoying, but guess what? This is over. With Airflow 2.8, there is a new functionality that allows Airflow to ship logs from other components to task logs. For example, logs related to the scheduler or the executors, you will see them in the task logs. If the scheduler terminates your task because of different reasons, same thing with the executors, you will be aware of that and you will have the logs in the corresponding task. You can enable or disable this feature with the new setting Enable task context logger. By default, it is set to true to make your life easier. Maybe it is a feature that you don't know yet because it is a little known feature, but you have the concept of listeners in Airflow. And listeners are helpful for auditing, cleaning, monitoring purposes, as you can listen for events at your Airflow instance level. For example, you want to know when a task instance goes from running to success or running to fail. Same thing for the diagrams or you want to do something before a backfill or after a backfill, you can do that with listeners. With 2.8, in addition to the backfills, diagrams, and task instances, you can listen for dataset events, like when a dataset is created or when it is changed. If you don't know what is a dataset, take a look at this concept in the video that I did here, as you will learn how to trigger data pipelines based on data updates. Okay, let me introduce to you the biggest new feature of Airflow 2.8, but for that, I would like to show you a use case. So as you know, there are many object storage systems such as S3, GCS, or Azure Blob Storage. But the thing is, when you want to transfer data from S3 to GCS or GCS to S3 or S3 to Azure Blob Storage, well, you need to use operators. And the problem is there is an exponential number of operators for those transfers. And if instead of transferring data from S3 to GCS, you want to transfer the data from GCS to Azure Blob Storage, well, you need to change your code. So this is over. In fact, in 2.8, you have a brand new API, which is the Airflow Object Store API. I won't go into the details, but this feature provides an abstraction that allows you to use different object storage systems, such as S3, GCS, or Azure Blob Storage, without having to change your code. And more importantly, you don't have to use all of those transfer operators anymore. You only have one transfer operator. But let me show you that in practice. Imagine you want to fetch data from an API, then store the data into a S3 bucket to finally transfer this data from S3 to GCS. Let me show you how to do it with this new API. So first thing first, in Airflow, I have two connections, one for the S3 bucket and another one for GCS. Then in your code editor, if you want to use the object storage API, you have to import the object storage path that comes from airflow.io, which is a new package that contains the Airflow Object Store API. Then we create an object storage path with the path to our S3 bucket, in this case, mark Airflow, that is the bucket, and we use the connection ID AWS S3 as specified in the Airflow instance. In fact, if we take a look at this bucket, it is empty. Next, we create a new task using the task decorator. So I'm using the task free API. If you don't know what is a task free API, it's truly a new way of authoring your data pipelines, which is much easier to read and to write. You will find the link in the description below. And this task fetches data from an API. And as you can see, it returns an object storage path. You will see what is the value of that in a second. Then we import pandas. We use the following API. We fetch the comments from this API and we transform the response of that API into a pandas data frame. This is where the magic begins. We want to store this data frame as a parquet file in the S3 bucket as specified in object storage path. So let's do it. First, we create a new variable path using the object storage path, our S3 bucket, and we want to store this data frame as a parquet file under the name data underscore and the date at which this DAG runs. Then to write this data frame into S3, the only thing we need to do is to use with, then the path that we've created here, we open it and we call to parquet to write a parquet file out of the data frame in the S3 bucket. Then last but not least, we return the path 
to this new file. That's why the task returns an object storage path. And finally, we call the task fetch data. Pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, you don't even realize that you are writing data into an object storage system with this new Airflow object store API. Now let's see if this task works. We click on the DAG. We have the task fetch data. We can trigger the DAG and wait a little bit. And now it's done. If we go to our S3 bucket, we have a new file data with the date of the DAG run. That was great, but that's not all. Now we are able to fetch data from an API and store this data into a S3 bucket using the Airflow Object Store API. What if we want to transfer this file from S3 to GCS without using a transfer operator? Well, guess what? It's incredibly simple. So first thing first, we create a new object storage path corresponding to the bucket in GCS. And again, we use the connection ID GCS as specified in our Airflow instance. And we can create a second task with the task for API that we can call transfer to GCS. That task takes a parameter, S3 path, which is an object storage path that comes from this task, okay? This task returns the path to the file in the S3 bucket. So we use it as a parameter of this task. This task returns nothing. And here to transfer this file from S3 into the GCS bucket, it is as simple as typing S3 path dot copy and the object storage path. So OSP GCS bucket like that. And finally, you call transfer to GCS and you pass fetch data as a parameter of it. So you see how crazy simple it is. I mean, you don't have to use any other transfer operators to transfer data between different object storage systems. That's the power of the Airflow Object Store API. Keep in mind, it is experimental. So if you want to use it in production, well, I do recommend you to wait a little bit more at least for 2.9. In this new release, there are a couple of improvements on the Airflow UI. And the first one is if you click on a task that shares data by creating a XCOM, you can see that XCOM by clicking on the task and XCOM, which is a new tab. And here you have the key of the XCOM and the value that this task shares. It's pretty useful as you can see that from the task in the grid view. Something else in admin and pools, if you have many pools to manage the concurrency of your tasks, it might be hard to know what a pool is used for. That's why now you have this description field, which is very useful for that. Something else that will save you a lot of time is in browse and task instances. From there, you can clear one or multiple task instances by selecting them. But what if you want to clear the downstream tasks of the selected task instances? Well, for a while, you weren't able to do that, but now you have another option. If you click on actions and clear, including downstream tasks, all the downstream tasks of the selected task instances will be cleared as well. Oh, and if you want to change the text color of the navbar, you can do it. There is a new setting for that, which is navbar text color. So for example, you can, I don't know, put the text in red if you want to scare people for the production environment. That's one way to use it. Back to the code, there is a new attribute in the task instance context that you can access, which is prev and date success. Very helpful, for example, to query data that was inserted during the previous successful DAG run. Do not confuse it with prev start date success corresponding to the previous successful DAG run start date, whereas the prev end date success corresponds to the previous successful DAG run completion date. In addition, Airflow 2.8 brings two new decorators. And the first one is the branch Python virtual env operator, which is actually a new operator as well. And it allows you to choose one task or another according to a condition that runs in a Python virtual environment. And that's the difference with the classic branch Python operator. So as you can see here, if you have specific dependencies that your condition needs to run. However, with this operator, the Python virtual environment is created each time the task runs, which is a bit slow. Whereas with the branch external Python operator, this one choose one task or another, like the previous one, but it uses a pre-installed Python virtual environment, which makes the task faster to execute. Finally, the diagram object has a new attribute clear number, allowing you to track the number of times a diagram has been cleared. So that might be useful for monitoring, auditing purposes. I hope you enjoyed that video. Now you know everything or almost everything about Airflow 2.8. Obviously there are other features and improvements, but I think 
Those are the most important ones. Take care and I see you for another video.